It's the end of the world as we know it, and I feel fine. Let's get out of here. I. Looking to support this ministry? Donation links are always in the description box below. Hey everyone, it's Brother Aaron from God A Minute, the subject of this video today. Of course, we're waiting for the rapture, and we believe that the rapture happens before the seven years of Jacob's trouble. But we're on a subject here which is so critical to understand, and... Um, Shout out to Sister Melody and her fam for sending me this Greek interlinear New Testament. I think it's awesome. It's going to bless the community. Friends and family, brothers and sisters in Christ, if you're going to be a purist about a translation, get to know the Greek and get to know the Hebrew. Because that was the original language. When we deal with uh, translations, well, they're just translations of the original. So I've got a Hebrew the original Hebrew here, and the original Greek here, and we're going to learn it together. Amen. It's going to be amazing. It's, it's such a blessing to understand um, God's original language of Hebrew and uh, what the New Testament was written in, which was Greek. I'm going to try my best to learn a bit more Greek, but we're going to use this Bible a little bit in this video. So, uh, one of its heads seemed to have a mortal wound. What is the head of the beast of, uh, of this seven-headed beast what's going on here but we need to have scripture interpret scripture and so i will flip the camera around in a second and show you my chart i'll just show you like this i get this whole diagram drawn out for you i know many of us are visual learners so this is going to help so i'm going to show you a visual thing here and i know repetition is key people learn with repetition and visual stuff so let me just tell you plainly what's what I think is going on here, and then I'll show you the text, and then I'll talk to you plainly again. Very plainly, the seven heads are seven kingdoms. This is my interpretation of it. Always, I want you guys to test things out and be your own Bereans, but the seven heads are seven kingdoms, and um, this is seven kingdoms that have been around since really the beginning of time. Uh, Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Muda, Persia, Greece, Rome, and there's arguments on the last one. It could have been, it could mean the Ottoman Empire. It could mean the current system, which is really being dominated by the U.S. It could mean uh, the United Nations system that's really, you know, it's just kind of any, there's a lot of interpretations of the last one, but a revived Roman Empire, that kind of thing. But it's really important for us to know that it's seven kingdoms the seven heads represent kingdoms so let's do that we're going to turn the camera around we're going to show you a couple scriptures and we're going to talk through it now more of a visual way so in order to understand this uh, this head that was wounded we have to go back and we got to read a couple scriptures so um what we have is i'll read you my new king james version first and here's my chart that i've got and we're going to have to kind of go backwards a little bit and work our way back. First, we got to read Revelation 17, because here's here's the foundation. If you don't understand this, and you misunderstand Revelation 17, 9 through 10, then you're not going to understand Revelation 13. And if you don't understand Daniel, then you're not going to understand Revelation 17. Then you're not going to understand Revelation 13 about this head that was wounded. So, uh, I usually read it on my New King James Version, and then I bounce around when I really want to dig into stuff. So, we're going to first start off with my default which is my new king james then we're going to show you the greek interlinear bible and here's what new king james says here is the mind which has wisdom the seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits uh, there are also seven kings five have fallen and one is and the other has not yet come and when he comes he must continue a short time and then it goes on the beast was and is not is himself also the eighth and is of the seven all right so the point is, in this version, it seems to indicate that the seven kings are something different than the seven mountains or the seven heads. Unfortunately, that's not a fantastic translation. So this translation has kind of confused a lot of people. So um, I'm going to also show you another screenshot. It's a lot of translations which tell us very plainly that the seven heads are seven mountains, which are the seven kings. Okay, so here is uh, the Greek version, and we're going to go right to the Revelation 17 area here. And we see here that uh, when it's talking about this this part right here, it's um, they it's tell telling us the kings are seven mountains, which are also the seven kings. So the Greek is telling us that it's all one and the same. And like the screenshot that I'm gonna, that I've shared, uh, or I'll share right now, 
it's um, telling us that the seven kings are seven mountains, which are the seven heads of the beast. So, looking at this chart again, we know that in Revelation 17, 9 through 10, that there's a harlot riding the beast, and it's got seven heads and uh, ten horns. And uh, that's clarified in other scriptures as well. But in this area, we've got a harlot riding the seven heads and the ten horns, and the seven heads are kingdoms. So that's the main point here, okay? So the seven heads are kingdoms. Every kingdom needs somebody to rule over it, yes, but these, these heads represent kingdoms. So the seven heads represent kingdoms. And these seven heads that are seven kingdoms are also seven mountains. So these mountains are symbolic of kingdoms. These mountains are the seven heads, which are the seven kingdoms. Really, there's been seven historical kingdoms throughout the history of humanity, seven dominant kingdoms. So, what are they? Well, uh, Israel was in captivity with, with Egypt. So, Jerusalem, you know, Israel was with Egypt. Uh, Israel was with Assyria. Okay, and so when when Israel was with Egypt, uh, they, you know, they 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 took on some of the Egyptian, um, you know, religious stuff. So they they. They really they, they committed adultery, idolatry when they were there. They it says that the Bible the Bible says that Jerusalem was a harlot with Assyria. So Jerusalem was a harlot with Assyria. Jerusalem was a harlot with Babylon. Jerusalem was a harlot with Medo Persia. Jerusalem was a harlot with Greece. Jerusalem was a harlot with Rome. And the seventh empire, which again it's arguable, you know, could it be the Ottoman Empire? Could it be the current system that's run by the U.S.? Could it be the current system run by the United Nations? Um, I, it's not, it's neither here nor there for me. It's, it's just important for, for you to understand that the seven heads represent seven essential main kingdoms. Okay. And the harlot, Jerusalem, has played the harlot with Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Medo Persia, Greece, Rome, and U.S. In other words, the harlot has sat on the heads of the beast this entire time. That's another video. That's a whole other subject. But we're just talking about kingdoms right now. We'll, we'll talk about that in another video. Um, so, we know that Revelation 17, without a doubt, the seven heads are actual seven kingdoms, and the mountains represent kingdoms. So, it's, this has nothing to do with seven landscapes uh, in Rome or Jerusalem, because, you know, five have, have fallen, one is, and one is yet to come. That's not talking about a mountain. C clearly not talking about a mountain. And we also can't say it's a mountain because one of these kingdoms gets wounded. So, Right in Revelation 13. So we're going to read that. And again, what a mountain, you're going to tell me that a mountain gets wounded and everybody marvels? No, there's no way. No way. So that makes zero sense, zero percent chance that that's even an option at this point. It can't be. People aren't going to go worship uh, a mountain and marvel and follow the mountain wherever, you know, like, no. But let's go read Revelation 13 right now and uh, and come back to this this chart. So... Revelation 13, my new King James is my start, and then I go all over the place. I go into all sorts of different translations when I really want to find something out. Then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads, which are kingdoms, and ten horns, which is a future system about to come. I think that the ten horns probably is best represented in the bricks currently. I'm not quite sure if that's it, but that seems to be the best candidate for the ten horns. Either way, it's a kingdom of 10 kings or kingdoms coming together at the final hour during Jacob's trouble. So the best candidate right now as of 2024 is probably the bricks, but we'll see how this goes. And on his horn, 10 crowns, and on his head, a blasphemous name. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard, and his feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. The dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as if it had been mortally wounded and his deadly wound was healed and all the world marveled and followed the beast. All right, so one of the heads was was damaged. So if we go back to our interlinear now, what does it say about one of these heads? What does it say? What does it say? Well, let's zoom in here. And uh, it says... Uh, one of its heads seemed to have a mortal wound. So this is not talking about a dude uh, getting uh, red juice on his face and saying a speech on some stage. That's not what this is talking about at all. This is about a kingdom falling. 
And, um, and so that's what's going on here. So we know, we know now that uh, the seven heads are kingdoms. We know that in Revelation 17, the seven heads are kingdoms and the ten horns are yet to come. And the seven heads are kingdoms and mountains. We know that in Revelation 13, we have seven heads that are kingdoms. And there's the ten horns is there uh, as well. And over here, Revelation 12, verse 3, we got the exact same thing. We got seven heads and ten horns, you know, coming to devour the male child. So we, uh, the male child, who is uh, birth from this woman, which is Israel, I believe, we are raptured as the male child, and caught up, and we're out of here, because this system, this whole system is coming to devour the male child, but it won't, because we're out. And then, this whole beast tries to go over the woman, after the woman, which, Israel, she gets protected for the last three and a half years, right? But, uh, again, we're, let's stay on the kingdom theme here. Daniel 7 is talking about kingdoms. It also talks about the ten horns. Well, how about that? And the ten horns is a, is a future... Uh, event that hasn't happened yet. And so we also have this theme in combination with Daniel 2 and Daniel 7. We have, uh, it, there was animals that were, it was called the lion and the bear and the leopard. That's Babylon, Medo-Persia, and Greece. Also, we have an image of a statue in Daniel chapter 2. We got the gold head, the, the chest plate of silver, um, the thighs of bronze, the, the legs of iron. Then the toes have uh, iron and clay, so that's the statue. But within those, um, right here, we got descriptions of Greece and Medo-Persia being the ram and the goat. That's a, that's a whole other chapter there, too. But we, we see the point of this is Daniel 7 is talking about kingdoms and ten horns. Daniel 2 is talking about kingdoms, which are mountains. Daniel 2 over here is talking about kingdoms and mountains. In fact, Jesus' final kingdom is going to come, and he says he describes it as a mountain. The stone is going to crush all the other kingdoms, and then Christ's kingdom is going to come. So the whole big, 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 big story is Christ is going to bring his kingdom to earth. That's the whole story. The whole theme of this whole Bible is Jesus bringing his kingdom, his millennial kingdom for the last 1,000 years. He's going to rule and reign. He's going to crush all these earthly kingdoms, crush the whole statue, crush the whole thing with his stone that was not made of hands, and it, it says that it's going to be a mountain. So Christ's kingdom is going to be a mountain. So kingdoms are mountains and are also heads, okay? So the seven heads are kingdoms. The seven heads are kingdoms. This, the kingdoms are mountains. The kingdoms are seven heads. The kingdoms are seven heads. The kingdoms are mountains. The kingdoms are mountains. The mountains are kingdoms. The mountains are kingdoms. The kingdoms are mountains. The mountains are kingdoms. The seven heads are kingdoms. The seven heads are kingdoms. The seven head are kingdoms. The kingdoms are the seven heads, which are the mountains. Okay, it's not a dude getting grape juice on his face on the stage. It's, that's not what that is. It's not what it is. So we have, um, again, Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Media, Persia, Greece, Rome, I think that it's U.S. So, so here's my perspective, okay? I think, here, let me turn the camera around here. Okay, you're in my living room, just going to talk to you now for, the summary is, I think that the seventh head, or the seventh head that gets wounded, see in Daniel 7, it talks about three of the horns that get subdued. So I think there's going to be some sort of a major war conflict right around rapture time, very soon, very soon. Uh, you you guys are all aware of the times that we're in. So I think that's going to happen pretty soon. And um, I think USA is pretty much the leading the leading charge of this last final kingdom before this Antichrist system is going to take shape. So these 10 kings, they don't have their crowns as of yet, but they've got to destroy uh, the this final system for them to come in power. But then the Antichrist is going to subdue three of those horns. It says that in Daniel 7. And so then he's going to be the eighth horn. And so I think that we're kind of at that precipice. But it's important to know that these seven heads are kingdoms. And so we need to know what we're looking for. So we're not looking for a dude to get assassinated. Uh, we're looking for a kingdom to fall. So we're looking at more global events. We're looking at more big countries coming against each other. That's what we're looking for too. We're also... Uh, looking for more heat on Israel. That's an obvious thing. 
there's going to be more heat on Israel as time goes on. That's to be expected. That's not really going to go away. And if we're understanding the Bible correctly, more heat on Israel until we fly. That's the bottom line. So just so you know what you're looking for. Um, I believe in the rapture before the seven years of Jacob's trouble. And believe me, it's going to be trouble. So hopefully this whole kingdom thing has been cleared up. We'll talk about it more. We're going to talk about the harlot quite a bit. This is an interesting study, a very interesting study. Um, but take heart. Jesus loves you and me. If you're tight with Christ, in my opinion, you'll be flying real soon. Real soon. I like the feast of weeks, but we'll talk about that another time. Love you guys very much. One day closer, see in the clouds. Go, Jesus, go. Hallelujah, hallelujah.